we're back on the farm in our first time playing farming simulator on hard mode with crop destruction on and seasonal growth. So there's no year round planning and there's a lot to do. We've got logs to sell from a big oak tree harvest and I'm formulating a new planting plan after we harvest our canola because we've got a critical point coming up for our sheep soon and need a lot of money to keep our farm growing. So to make money quickly, I planted a few oak trees down the sides of our fields. Now, this was both a good decision and a bad one that I'm paying the price for. The good part was that oak trees grow very quickly in the game, relative to other types of trees. And price-wise, they can carry the maximum amount of profit per tree. And I needed that money quickly for this sheep issue I have to resolve. But I'll talk about that in a minute. Basically, I didn't have time for other types of trees to grow. So the decision was oaks. The bad part is that oak trees are not straight, pole-like growing trees, like pines. So they require a lot more trimming and cutting. They also don't stack as neatly as pine trees do on trailers. So I'm doing a lot of manual labor on these trees to squeeze out that extra profit. But let's get these trees loaded and sold, then move on to the next chore on the farm. So I got the idea that maybe if I put the sides on the trailer, I could save a little bit of time getting the limbs and trunks loaded. It might be easier to just dump or throw them over the side and not have to worry about stacking them as neatly to stay on the converted flatbed. So let's give that a try. Well, my conclusion is that it is a little easier, but my tractor and front loader assembly are almost not quite tall enough to really do it well. As the trailer fills up, it gets harder and harder to tip the log grabber far enough forwards to release the logs. I think I'll stick with the method though, but not use the cover because it breaks my immersion and really doesn't seem to help hold in the logs. Also, in an effort to just try different things, I think I'll take a load of just the big logs and then do a load of the small limbs. Kind of like dividing up the load to see if I can stack more separately than when they're all mixed and stacked together. I'm also keeping up with repairs regularly because it is costing me less than if I let the condition of the tractor get too bad off. So I'm repairing everything every couple loads. I know. I still need a new tractor, but that's for another day. This is finally the last of the logs. So while I'm getting this last bit done, let me explain my sheep dilemma. I have 36 sheep and my barn holds 65 sheep. In three months, my oldest sheep will give birth and bring me up to 48 sheep. While that's happening, my second oldest sheep will reach puberty in one month and be ready to give birth in a total of six months from now, bringing me up to 60 sheep. In the meantime, those oldest sheep will be ready to give birth again in just two more months. And at that point, I won't have any room for them. So as the bottom line here, I really have until February, maybe March, to raise almost $100,000 for a new sheep bar. I'll also have operating costs each month payments and our game starting loan and have to rent or buy a trailer to move the sheep. So we're really in a time crunch for money. All right, with these last logs sold, we have about 19 and a half thousand, which is giving us a little breathing room. 
even though I have to dip into that immediately on repairs. So what's our status? The grass field is on its first month of growth, so we won't be harvesting it for a couple more months. The silage is coming along, but it'll still be a while. And the canola should be ready next month. Though we won't be selling it just yet, we'll store it at the train station silos till the price is at its best in the winter. So for now, let's just do a few chores. We'll move some lettuce pallets, water the greenhouses, and feed our lovely chickens. Okay, we're done with the day. We did a lot of work on the farm, and it's a beautiful morning. So let's check the canola. Yes, it's ready for harvest. So let's get on with that and think about what the next move is. So, while working the canola, I did some mental calculations. If I still have 15,000 of my current funds still left when I go to buy the sheep barn, I won't, but let's assume I do, then the canola at a good price should bring in about 25,000. That'll give me 40,000 total. I have the silage bales fermenting, and if I recall, that should be able to get around 30,000 from that field of silage. If I'm able to get a second round of mowing and silage made before the sheep timer runs out, that'll be another 30,000 for a total of 100,000. Almost exactly what I need for the new sheep barn. It'll be cutting it close, but if I need an oak tree or two, I've always got those on hand. The question is what to do with this canola field once it's done. In looking at the planting calendar, I just missed the carrot planting season. I would have had to rent all the equipment and it would have been risky, but I would have tried it. I could also try to plant some grass and hope to get another quick round of silage, or, or at least baled grass, but I really don't want to do more grass other than what's on our one field. So I think I'll go more conventional. Plant some barley in the next couple months, and that'll put us on a different cycle to try the carrots next year. We'll have to rent a planter for the barley, but we'll get a small one and just put in the extra labor. But one thing at a time, let's finish the canola harvesting and then move on to the next step. All right, that's the last bit of canola, and including the 22,500 liters we already have in storage, that gives us around 33,000 liters. Now, if my math is right, 
and we wait until we get at least $750 per liter when the price is best in November, we'll make that $25,000 I estimated. Hopefully a little bit more. I've still been debating exactly what to do with this field, but one thing's for sure, we have to get it cultivated to do any planting. So we'll get the disc harrow hooked up and get to work. This cultivator doesn't have a great working with, so it took a bit of time. But we've got that done, and now to decide the fertilizer. I know the seed for oilseed radish is far cheaper than the liquid fertilizer for our sprayer, but it means we'll have to cultivate the whole field again, which is additional repair costs on our aging tractor. I'll tell you what. I'll go repair the tractor and see how much we're really talking about for repairs and fuel given that we just finished a round of cultivation. Okay, the repairs plus the fuel is about 350 and I'm probably going to use about 300 liters of oilseed radish seed, which is another 250. So that's about 600 for the seed and recultivation, which isn't bad. There's probably also a little more wear for the planting than the spraying as well, but we'll do it. We have a month to spend before we're able to plant the barley anyway, so we'll go for it. I've got some seed at the store, but I don't think it'll be enough. We'll use that up though and see how far we get. Yep, ran a good bit short. I'll buy two bags so we have plenty for the barley. All right, the cover crop is planted. But after all our basic expenses, we've eaten away $5,000 from where we were after the tree harvest. Unavoidable, but scary for meeting our goal. Tomorrow, we'll be very busy. We have to cultivate in the cover crop, plant barley, mow, bale, and roll the grass field. Maybe even load and sell the silage if the price is good. All that and probably some other things a farm will need. So we'll call it a day, get some sleep, and start fresh tomorrow. Take care, and I'll see you in the next episode.